Good morning and welcome to Frank's School, 7th year, 64th day, first video. Uh, this is still part of the June, <clears throat> beginning of June update of what's going on here uh, at the Camp Ranch campus of Frank's School in preparation for uh, my hopes of um, uh, doing uh, the movie Resurrection. Anyway, I, I, I was touching on plastic uh, in the last video and I said I'd come back to it and I will. Today I can be much briefer, I think. Must plastic be a bad word? At the moment, people have hopped on that idea that plastic is horrible. Uh, and, and uh, you know, I doubt, or I, I don't doubt, that the world would be a much better place if plastic had never been invented uh, in some. I mean, that, that it would be a little hard to complete that argument, but I agree that the world doesn't seem to have become a better place because of the invention of plastic, quite the opposite. Uh, but, uh, uh, but it's here. Uh, and I don't mean that it always has to keep being manufactured. Uh, so much of the plastic that was made was not made biodegradable. It's here. It's, something's got to be do done with it. it. It's in the world. Uh, and, uh, <clears throat> and, and I want to use the opportunity here to point out that in my, my thinking, I, I, don't, I don't argue for a return to the past. There, it can't be done. Uh, there are <clears throat> some people, they listen to what I say or they look at what I'm doing and they think, well, that's just nostalgic. You want to go back 200 years uh, uh, to, to a time. No, you can't. Uh, the, the world has been changed. Uh, there, there is no going back. <clears throat> but a lot of the things that have uh, come about in the last 200 years could and should be rejected. Uh, uh, but when I think about, so what do we have that actually is a good thing, possibly? And uh, I, I, in that connection, I want to mention spring steel. I think of sp spring steel and I think possibly various kinds of plastic that are certainly multiple use plastic, but that are sheeting, uh, that, are, that are not containers, but they're sheeting. It could serve a good purpose. Back, back around the 1960s when uh, poly, uh, polyethylene became available first. Uh, the, the joke was that that was, that was a hippie's tuba force because you, you know you could stretch it around about anything and it was tough but you got six mil stuff and it was translucent and it would hold the wind out and stuff. <clears throat> now polyethylene has knocked a lot of houses down because uh, people didn't understand <laughs> that, that the condensation was going to hit that and then run down on the inside when, when it hit the cold wall, run down and then collect at the bottom and rot the sills out or the, the shoe out. They didn't understand that. Uh, if, they, if they would put the plastic on the outside, on the cold part, you know, going with insulation, if it was on the warm side of the insulation, it was okay. But people didn't understand it. But anyway, uh, spring steel is, is one of those things that comes to mind and you might want to wonder why, what is it about spring steel? Well, it makes uh, flexible saw blades possible and therefore a uh, 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 bandsaw. And with bandsaws, you can saw wood, I believe, I'm, I'm going to undertake to demonstra demonstrate it, but you can saw wood with wind power. Uh, a, a bandsaw can go slow, slowly, uh, you know, whereas a, the st that was a big development in steel to be able to make a big circular saw too, but it has to run at about 500 or, or 550 RPM to, to really cut, but a bandsaw can go slowly and it's thin. And the slow is almost the most important part because uh, w with a, a little bit of wind power, you, you can turn a bandsaw slowly. So anyway, spring steel, I just sort of throw that in there. Maybe I should be erasing this stuff again. I don't know, maybe I don't need to. Uh, yeah, I, I think I will, it helps me here. So no return to the past, it, it can't be done. So anyone that, that just refers to me as being uh, nostalgic for the past and I wanna go back 200 years, oh no, then you don't understand. Uh, uh, all right, so multiple use plastic. You, you know, single use plastic is, is, is being harped on now, and of course, plastic that's made not to be uh, biodegradable. Hey, I got to stop and, and point this out too, because I, otherwise I'll forget. When I was talking about laying subfloors down, uh, a subfloor over the sub, subfloor of pallets, 
and uh, and I was saying that you don't actually have to make that saw cut around the outside edge. I, you'd have to look back at a video. I've also realized that if you leave gaps on the inside in every course, don't fill them out right away. Uh, you know, to go around the perimeter, but leave it, leave at least a gap there because then you have a last chance to adjust the sill and get it square and get it just right. And then with the sledgehammer, you can just bump those boards. If there are any that get left out that have to be adjusted, you can bump them around. And then finally, then make the saw cuts to fill in the gaps. Uh, another thing I wanted to say is when I was talking about extreme mulching, it, it should be done in strips, in quite narrow strips. And of course, on contour lines, in contour strips, but in any case, in strips, so that you can walk between them and you can <clears throat> adjust the strips. Well, I don't know, if, especially that second thing. I don't know if you understood in that way. Well, there's three kinds of plastic, I think it is, that, that I want to mention. Bale wrap is very thin. It's white. And the farmers use it to, they say they make hay, haylage or something they call it. They can make hay wet. I, I don't, it's going to be a long time before I am sold on that. I, hay to me needs to be made dry, but, but they, a lot of times they can't. So even though it's not dry, they'll bale it in round bales and then they'll wrap it. So it looks like one long white Tootsie Roll as bale after bale, round bale after round bale is in a line and it's all wrapped. So, uh, and then it, it, it makes something different from hay. It's, well, haylage is what they call it. Anyway, it's very thin. It's only one mil thin. And I have found that it is very useful. I've mentioned it before. It's like a, 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 a removable temporary, well, it can stay there a long time. It, sadly, it doesn't seem to be very biodegradable either. But it's like a layer of paint that you can take off <laughs> if, if you want to. I, I, I don't like paint at all. Well, I, I'd better get on to that. But anyway, it's, it's a, like a layer of white paint that can be applied and then taken off. Uh, and and I actually bought a roll of it new, you, you know, I think I it might have cost me $80 and it'll probably last me for the entire village because the stuff uh, is it, just so thin and there's so much of it. But uh, I, I, it's, I use a lot of it that, that farmers would otherwise burn, you know, after they take it off the bale, they'll put it in a pile and then burn it. Uh, and I've used a lot of that, but it's, it's not so easy. For my purposes, that wasn't going to work. I, I needed to have the regular stuff. So sort of my apologize for, for apology for, for building, buying, uh, buying that new. I use it to wrap the uh, faux cuts to give a first uh, wind. It's, it's wind tight, it's water tight, uh, and it should absolutely come off uh, when the plastering is done or, or the cobbing on the outside. So that's one kind of plastic that I think is probably does have a role to play. <clears throat> Bunker cover, I talk a lot about that. That was sort of newly disco well, discovered by me in the last year or so or more. It's 10 mils thick and it's very tough and it I think is going to do fine for the impervious layer in my living roofs and it also does fine for uh, uh, this uh, extreme mulching because it is opaque. It is opaque and it's black on one side and white on the other. You can get it all black. I don't know if you can get it all white. But black on one side and white on the other. And so it's albedo manipulating. You can, uh, if, you, if it's black on the ground, it's going to absorb heat. If you flip it over to the white side, it's going to reflect that heat off. That's what albedo is basically is. It's reflectivity of a surface. And that becomes very interesting in terms of climate change because even though it might be a small patch you're talking about you actually can manipulate that like like the arctic ice sheet is one of the huge problems about that is it's white and as it's melting off it's it's the surface is not white anymore and so that surface absorbs heat and you've got that that uh, positive feedback loop going on but anyway, there's a, per, there's a way where a person can actually take a surface and manipulate <coughs> the albedo. You might look into that if you want. Um, but anyway, it's, uh, I, I find that it uh, uh, potentially has, has a, a use. Now, it's being put in piles, it's being burnt. There, there is no second use that most people, well, they do a little bit. They'll save a chunk to lay over their firewood pile or something. If, 
but they're careless, the farmers, as they drive their machine into the silage and take it out by the scoops, they tend to tear it all up. Uh, but anyway, so, so I don't buy new, you can buy new, uh, and it doesn't have to be a, a, a silage bag, it doesn't have to be like that, it can be a, a flat sheet, it's, it's, it's not that expensive really compared to roofing or something like that. Now there's another kind of plastic bale net which is fairly useful and boy I don't know about that. When I first, I've got bales in the barn that came to me like that. I don't know about that stuff. At first I hated it. I still don't like it much. I immediately put it in a, a, a sack or something because birds can get caught in it. It's like a steady trap. It's like a net. I mean it's pretty stuff in a way and it. it's like like a hair net. It's like silky kind of a stuff but I really don't know about that stuff. That stuff, if it's going to be around, it maybe should be instantly gathered up and, and then burnt or, or something because uh, don't know about that. But maybe, I don't know, maybe as part of plastering. Uh, and, and containers. Now, these single use containers, uh, it'd be wonderful if they weren't made anymore, but they're there, so many of them. And, and as I've said before, the folk huts that I build can absorb the containers because they go into the walls as, a, as an airspace, as like a bubble, and then plastered over. There's your insulation. Uh, all right, and then uh, I just threw tires in there as well because here are two things that basically the world doesn't know what to do with them, and it's a big problem because they're all over the place. What do you do with these? Uh, and the, the tires, I've explained elsewhere, that I use... Uh, go on. Uh, that I use uh, as weights uh, in uh, extreme mulching. All right, been a little fast. Bye for now.